I don't think many people have been following this story and that's really discouraging because we have a really unique opportunity and a limited time frame to actually restore net neutrality so long as Biden's FCC nominee, Gigi Sohn, gets confirmed. But the right is waging an all-out war against her confirmation. Lindsey Graham has publicly denounced her and said he's going to fight to stop her and do everything that he can to do just that. And also, the propaganda arm has kicked in because Fox News did a segment where they fear-mongered about Gigi Sohn. And the things that they say are just downright absurd and incredibly, incredibly deceitful. President Biden's new FCC nominee is being hailed by the White House as a leading advocate for open, affordable and democratic communications networks. But is that just mm. code for media censor? Here to react, Fox News contributor Joe Concha. Joe, her name is Gigi Sohn. How petrified should every American be about her nomination? Well, let's read back Gigi Sohn's own words. This is what she just had to say in 2020. Quote, I believe that Fox News has had the most negative impact on our democracy. It's state-sponsored propaganda with few, if any, opposing viewpoints. Where's the hearing about that? Sohn also questioned Sinclair Broadcasting's, quote, fitness to be a broadcast licensee, unquote. In other words, she will go after the licenses of Fox News, of Sinclair, of anybody who disagrees with the Biden administration. Pyongyang couldn't draw it up any better. She cannot be confirmed because the FCC cannot be weaponized to squash free speech and viewpoints that the Biden administration just happens to disagree with. And it's up to moderate Democrats to ensure that does not happen. That hearing starts, I believe, about in a week or so. Uh, and we all should be paying attention to that because this could be uh, Mr. Biden's most dangerous nominee yet. Lindsey Graham agrees with you. He released a statement saying Gigi's Sohn is a complete political ideologue who has disdain for conservatives. She would be a complete nightmare for the country when it comes to regulating in public the public airwaves. I will do everything in my power to convince colleagues on both sides of the aisle to reject this extreme nominee. But in this political climate, show, can somebody like Senator Lindsey Graham convince the other side of the aisle to agree with him? It's very difficult, right? It, it won't take too many Democrats, though, to, to tip the scales, obviously, uh, particularly when we're talking about a 50-50 Senate. So, again, you bring up the names, Manchin, Cinema. Mm. that's about it. But you would hope that they would say, all right, this is a bridge too far, and, and we have to put a stop to this. Uh, be, because, again, uh, this is somebody in Gigi Stone, Stone who wants to stop what some people want to say on the airwaves, and that's not the role of the FCC. I don't think she's going to be invited to conscious yeah. Thanksgiving, regardless Twitter. of white meat. It's always or, Twitter uh, with these meat. nominees that get them in trouble. So that was ridiculous, but I've got to say that from a propaganda standpoint, that was actually surprisingly clever because if they just say, look, this FCC nomination wants to restore net neutrality, that's a losing argument because even conservatives support net neutrality. So they don't want to have that battle. So what they do want to do is bring this battle on a field where they feel a little bit more comfortable and try to bring in the culture war. Well, she's a far leftist, you know, she's in favor of censorship and she's a censorian, basically trying to tie her to SJWs. And it's actually something that will convince a lot of Americans, given that they don't really know who Gigi Sohn is, and they don't even know what's going on currently with regard to the FCC process. So, you know, if they explain it in a way that is not disingenuous, then they're going to lose that argument. So what do they do? They fearmonger and they take that hyperbole to the next level. So she was compared to uh, North Korea. That's the kind of policies that she wants to enact as a commissioner on the FCC. It's like Pyongyang, except you don't have that much power as FCC commissioner. And even if she got what she wanted, which is to restore net neutrality, we'd just be going back to the Obama era rules, which is what everyone wants, what we support. So it's funny how they have to be so bombastic. You know, they describe what she said and they ask, oh, well, is this just code for media censor? 
And then the Fox host asks, how petrified should every American be about her nomination? So they, they don't really say anything specific there. There's a lot of innuendo and implications about what she would do. But what she's saying with regard to Sinclair Broadcasting, for example, her comments are true. But in terms of regulation, she's not going to revoke the broadcasting license from Fox News. So they want to paint her as the censorian who's going to crack down on freedom of speech. But that's not actually the case. What she's referring to... And if you look at her regulatory history, she is in favor of actual competition in the market, which in theory is what these capitalists should support, but they're not going to tell you that. So if a media company is too big, Gigi Stone would probably support regulating them more or breaking them up if need be. So this is from 2018. This is with regard to Sinclair Broadcasting, and this was the market share that they held, about 40% of households. So in the event they merged with Tribune, then this is the amount that their market share would grow from 40% to 72%. So when Gigi Sohn targets companies like Sinclair, this is what she's referring to. She wants to actually make it so that way the market is more free and there's not all of these monopolies. That's one of the biggest issues with the internet in the United States. It's very monopolistic. You usually have only one or two internet service providers if you're lucky. Comcast, AT&T, Verizon, sometimes CenturyLink, sometimes other companies. But that's what she's referring to. But they're not going to tell you that. Instead, they're going to imply that, well, she wants to crack down on anyone who she disagrees with. It's preposterous and it's especially stupid considering that Ajit Pai took a similar stance to what Gigi Sohn is saying. Now back when Ajit Pai was overseeing the failed merger of Sinclair and Tribune, it was very obvious that he was acting on their behalf from the inside and there was even an investigation by Watchdog over whether or not he did act improperly and they concluded that he did not but still after all of that he ended up sinking the Sinclair Tribune merger. Why? I think it was because he got a little bit too close there. There was a little bit too much heat, so he just couldn't approve it without getting some sort of a penalty or fine for corruption. I don't know. That's all speculation. It doesn't really matter, though, because what this was in refer uh, reference to is um, monopolies. So <laughs> they're trying to take her words and twist it. They don't want to talk about her rightful critiques of these major media conglomerates she you know she's calling out monopolies but they're saying mm, is she though is that just a code for media censor and multiple times you see them broadcast the signal to joe manchin and kirsten cinema we really hope that they tank this that's not what they said but in particular uh Concha said she cannot be confirmed because the fcc can't be weaponized by the biden administration to squash free speech they happen to disagree with and it's up to moderate democrats to ensure that that does not happen and says this could be biden's most dangerous nominee yet so they want you to believe this is about freedom of speech and, you know, in a roundabout way, it is because freedom of speech means you have a free and open Internet, which is what she wants through net neutrality. But instead, they want to make it seem like, oh, well, she's going to go after conservatives so they could tie this to the culture war and this, you know, conservative persecution complex about how conservatives are always targeted on Facebook and Twitter. They can actually gin up support from conservatives on this issue when last time conservatives were not in support of repealing net neutrality. So that's their playbook. They're trying to tank this confirmation by making it seem as if Gigi Sohn is essentially, for lack of a better word, an SJW. Don't fall for it. Gigi Sohn supports net neutrality and that's what she wants to do. And maybe she will go after monopolies, but that's a good thing because in a free market, which they supposedly support, mind you, you want competition. You want to encourage competition. You want to regulate these companies in a way that facilitates competition. Otherwise, it's worse for all of us. We have less freedom in the end, but instead they're saying, no, she's the one who's actually against freedom and she hates freedom of speech. Not true. It's nonsensical. I encourage lefties to pay attention to this issue because the right is already mobilized against her. Again, Lindsey Graham is fighting her. So if we let them have this battle and we don't push back at all, they win and we don't get net neutrality restored. And we only have a limited window of opportunity to restore net neutrality. So if we lose this uh, chance, then that's really sad. But um, this is someone who is on our side. This is someone who actually would take it further and support municipal public broadband. So the issue of net neutrality would be settled permanently.
So we have to support Gigi Stone and anything that we can do to rally around her, even if it's just defending her and pushing back on social media against these lies. I think that's important, and I would encourage you to do that.